light is perhaps the most powerful stimulus for our mental, physical health and for our performance in every endeavor. What light does is it sets the foundation of our abilities and it does that indirectly and directly. Indirectly by controlling when we are asleep and when we are alert. And it also has direct effects on the way that our nervous system functions. So I'll just get right into some practices and then I'll flesh out those practices with some science um, to explain why they work. The way that we function is by way of our nervous system. Our nervous system links all the organs of the brain and body. So we've got brain, spinal cord, but then of course, spleen, heart, lungs, etc. And the nervous system is the system that coordinates all of those. The nervous system therefore is without question the most powerful organ system of our body and it acts as a conductor. It is locked inside of our skull and body and it has no knowledge of the outside world and vision, which involves photons, light energy, reaching the eyes, getting converted into electrical signals, is the way that the nervous system decides when to be alert and functional and when to be asleep. It also is what determines all the various little oscillations in ability to focus and creativity and all the other things that we consider life. When you wake up in the morning, your brain and body have effectively been in the dark, regardless of what sleep environment you happen to be sleeping in. And you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in the back of your eye, and a little structure called the neural retina. It's a little three-layered structure. And those nerve cells are not involved in detecting the shapes of things. What they are essentially looking for, what activates them, is bright light, ideally from sunlight. And when bright light, ideally from sunlight, reaches the eye, those particular neurons send a signal off into the vaulted dark of the brain. Uh, they do that by way of a little wire called an axon, and they communicate with an area of the brain that's vitally important called the hypothalamus. It sits right above the roof of your mouth, and it harbors a bunch of structures that are responsible for hormones like testosterone and estrogen, for cortisol release in other locations in the body. Basically, controls when you're going to be alert, when you're going to be asleep, your hormones, your immune system function, and your appetite and your mood. So this morning signal of getting bright light in your eyes is absolutely vital. Now, how does one do this? The best and ideal way to do this would be to wake up, go outside, and get some bright light in your eyes without sunglasses. If you have to wear corrective lenses or contacts, that's absolutely fine. If you think about what corrective lenses and contacts do, they actually focus light onto the retina precisely. So corrective lenses actually help focus the light to these neurons. Now, the ideal situation would be a nice, bright, clear day, you get five to 10 minutes of sunlight. You don't have to look directly at it. In fact, never look directly at any light of any kind that's so bright that it's painful to look at. But you get some light indirectly through your, into your eyes, some bright sunlight. You go inside and get ready for your day. By doing that, you, you do a number of things. First of all, every cell in your body has a 24 hour clock, meaning there's a timer that goes from zero to 24 and then repeats. And that's true from the day you're born until the day you die. However, every cell in your body has a, its own separate clock. And the way that those clocks are coordinated into coherent action is from a signal from this brain structure called the hypothalamus. And the only way that signal can arrive properly is if you're getting light to trigger the hypothalamus to say, okay, it's the start of the day, everybody start. Otherwise, your body slowly over time becomes a little bit of a clock shop where every clock is on a different timer and it's alarming at different times. It's actually what happens when you travel and you get stomach issues or you're not feeling right from jet lag, your body clocks, the individual clocks of the cells in your body are falling out of sync. Okay? They're becoming what we call unentrained or as asynchronous. So you get up in the morning, you go outside and you get some bright light in your eyes. However, many people, including me, wake up before the sun is out. In fact, I'm up you know, early this morning and there's a very little light in the sky. The sky is just a pale gray right now. In that case, it's very simple. Flip on as many bright artificial lights as possible, ideally overhead lights, because the neurons in the eye that perceive this light and send that signal to the brain reside in the lower half of the eye. And therefore, because of the optics of the eye, they actually view the upper visual field. So as you'll notice, I've got some bright lights on behind me, but sunlight is really the key. And so once the sun is out, it's very important to get outside and get anywhere from, you know, five to 20 minutes of bright light exposure. A lot of people can't afford the time of 20 minutes. If it's a dim overcast day, the remarkable thing is there is more photon light energy coming through that cloud cover than there is from these bright lights of the sort that are behind me here. Now, some people live in an area of the world where it is very dark in winter or their schedule is arranged such they just can't do this within 30 minutes of waking. In that case, there are daylight simulators that are commercially available. They're 
they're very expensive. What I recommend is actually something quite low cost and works just as well, which is you get a ring light, like the selfie ring lights that the uh, YouTubers and the Instagrammers use, and just put that on a table or facing you as you work in the morning. And actually you could leave that on all day. Basically what you want to do is get as much bright light as you safely can in your eyes all day long, and then as little bright light in your eyes as you can between the hours of about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. for reasons we can discuss. So bright light exposure through windows or, or windshields will not suffice. The key thing is to understand that people have probably heard that blue light is bad, wear blue blockers. Blue light is wonderful. Blue light is actually what sets this clock in the brain that signals to the rest of the body. It creates a state of alertness and well-being throughout the day. And it sets a timer of about 16 hours for when you're going to get sleepy later that night. And I'll explain the mechanisms in a moment. So throughout the day, you want to get as much bright light in your eyes as you can. If you need to use one of these ring lights, great. Some of them are very low cost. I realize everyone has different budgets, but the daylight simulators are kind of ridiculously expensive considering that all you really need is a bunch of bright light in your eyes. However, sunlight is best. And so if you have breaks during the day, go outside, even if you're going to be on your phone texting. If you can take calls outside, do it. If you can get out onto a balcony, do it. If the sun is on the opposite side of the building and you're on the balcony taking a call, you're still getting more photons, more light energy. And a fun little free resource that's out there, there's an app called Light Meter. And you'll notice that on a dim overcast day, you're getting you know 8,000 lux uh, of light coming to you. And then you'll point at one of these very bright artificial lights in your home and you'll look at and it'll say 800 lux. And like, wow, how is that? Well, it's because there's a lot of light scatter in, in the outside. So you, you don't perceive it as a focused beam. So this behavior, this, this activity should be done every day. If you miss a day, it's okay. There's a slow integrative system, but you don't want to miss more than one day. Why? Well, one of the key features of every cell in our body is that it's coordinated to a general hormonal signal. Hormones are chemicals that are released in one location in the body that go and act at other locations in the body. And a key hormone for health is cortisol. We always hear about cortisol as a stress hormone, but cortisol every 24 hours, there is going to be a peak in cortisol release. That's non-negotiable. It's a healthy peak. It's the one that wakes you up in the morning, increases your body temperature, which is part of waking up, gives you focus and alertness. It activates your immune system in a positive way, provided you don't have too much cortisol throughout the day. And that peak is going to happen no matter what. If you get light in your eyes early in the day, that peak will arrive early in the day. This is vitally important because one of the key findings in the field of psychiatry, biological psychiatry, is that when that peak doesn't arrive early in the day, it starts drifting later and later and later in the day. When people start getting mood issues, they start feeling irritable, and actually, it's a hallmark physiological signature of depression to have a late shifted cortisol peak. In addition to that, many people who have depression or even mild depression wake up at two or three in the morning and can't fall back asleep. In fact, that's one of the first things that a psychiatrist will ask about if you go into their office. And it doesn't mean that if you're waking up at two or three in the morning that you're necessarily clinically depressed, but it's one of the hallmark features. And many people report that just simply getting bright light exposure in their eyes early in the day, ideally from sunlight, corrects a number number of these issues. Will it cure clinical depression? Probably not if it's very severe, but many people actually feel better all day long. They sleep better. Obviously, this is a zero cost tool. And when I say we were designed to do this, I, I, I don't get into discussions about design and spirituality. As I always say, one thing is absolutely certain, which was that I was not consulted at the design phase and neither was anyone else that I know. So I can't answer questions about that, but these cells and circuits are there for a purpose. They have no other function except to bring information about when there's light in the environment to the brain and essentially to convert that into a bunch of hormonal signals. So I want to talk about the other hormonal signal because this is really key. Many people have heard of the hormone melatonin. This is a hormone that is secreted from a little gland, a little pea-sized gland in the brain called the pineal. The pineal is the only source of melatonin in the brain and body and melatonin's role is to make us feel sleepy and fall asleep. It does not actually keep us asleep. I'm not a fan of melatonin supplementation for reasons we can talk about in a little bit, but light viewed by the eye inhibits melatonin. So much so that if melatonin levels are at their peak and you walk into the bathroom at night and you flip on the lights and it's really bright, if you spend more than 10 or 15 seconds in that light, your melatonin levels will drop to zero. So this is a remarkable relationship between the external world and melatonin. And this is why in the evening, you don't have to be paranoid about lights. But what I recommend is that starting around you know 8, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., start dimming the lights in your environment. Just dim the lights as low as you can safely have them. People have different lifestyles and different needs. If you're on screens, dim the screens. If you want to buy blue blockers, fine. I, I don't have any relationship to any blue blocker company. The truth is you need to be worried about the brightness of light, 
more so than the color of light. I know people that have converted their entire home to red light at night, which is definitely the wavelength of light that has the least stimulating effect on this system. And th that's um, kind of an interesting thing. I, I think we're gonna start seeing more kind of smart homes and smart lighting systems. Most people don't do that. I don't do that. What I do is in the evening, I start dimming the lights. And if I use lights, I use lights that are set low in the physical environment. And that's because they won't trigger activation of these cells quite as much. You really wanna control your transition into wakefulness by viewing bright light early in the day and throughout the day. And then you really want to control your transition into sleepiness by dimming the lights in the evening. And if people do those two things, they are going to see an outsized effect on their mental and physical health. It's with, without question. And then there's one other kind of tweak to all this that's if you can, try and get outside in the evening or late afternoon when the sun is headed towards the horizon. It doesn't have to be a sunset. You can watch the sunset, great. But what we call low solar angle light has particular wavelengths that are optimal for activation of these cells. And what happens then is very interesting. You're giving it two signals. You're giving it a morning signal saying, ah, it's morning, you viewed like that morning. Then you're getting it an evening signal and this clock in the brain, it gets a little technical, but it has two oscillators and it has a morning oscillator and an evening oscillator. And then your system really knows where it is in time. And then if you avoid bright lights in the evening, most days, you know, we've all you know, fall off every once in a while. You go to a show or you go out and it's bright in the restaurant, fine, no big deal. But if you do this most days, your system starts to hum along with the natural rhythms of the rise and falling of the sun. And it's no coincidence that we have a 24 hour clock in every one of our cells because the earth of course spins on its axis once every 24 hours. And in addition to this, if you start doing it regularly, something really beautiful happens, which is that melatonin signal, remember light inhibits melatonin. The longer the day, the shorter the melatonin signal. So in summer months, your your body it releases very little melatonin. In winter months, because days are shorter and there's less light overall, you release much more melatonin. So you actually have a calendar system in your body that relates to the orbit of the earth around the sun once every 365 days. And what happens is when you start getting regular about morning light viewing, and in some sense, evening light viewing every once in a while, or ideally every day, what happens is your system starts to fall into a very regular pattern where you feel sleepy when you expect to and want to be sleepy. You feel wide awake. And people actually report the subjective experience of going outside in the morning. And as the sun comes out or as they get this bright light exposure from an artificial light, they can actually feel their system charging. That's not a placebo effect. That's a real effect of the release of cortisol and adrenaline into your body. The release of dopamine is controlled by light, powerful neuro uh, neuromodulator that makes you feel good. So I could go on and on, but it's very simple. Get as much bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight throughout the day when you want to be alert. Really limit the brightness of light and the amount of light as you head into the nighttime. 